We uh, thought that it would be very useful for a number of uh, attendees at the Congress to uh, to be able to talk to some people who know a lot about the publishing of journal articles. So we have here, have, do they, does everybody yeah, know we, who you are? Okay, so ourselves. Jim and Ian and Tom Nesbitt. So, uh, so we have education, geography and sociology slash ethnography. What we have decided to do is rather than have kind of lots of presentation from the three of us, we, we agreed that we would each come up with half a dozen questions each, which we would ask each other and use that to kind of stimulate, um, stimulate conversation. So hopefully, um, usually when you ask people to do this, they come up with the same five or six questions. So I've prepared seven, and I'm sure my other colleagues have as well. But that's the, that's no, the, I only did five that's the way that we, <laughs> that's the way that we're going to do it. So, I mean, the purpose of this is to generate some discussion about, about scholarly publishing and about our respective journals and about how, we might get pub how you might get published in journals in Canada. So that's, as I understand, what we're going to do. So, yep. Okay. So I don't know how we want to start this, but Ian, why don't you, I, I, I think that what we tried to do was to say, independent, what are the most frequently asked questions that, uh, that scholars present to editors in terms of getting published? So what, what we thought we would do would be to just develop our, on a basis of our own experience what those questions would be. And so they'll come from very different perspectives and very different, Ian and I were talking about that mine are kind of questions that focus on contributors, whereas his questions will be more focused in terms of the editors. But I think you'll get a general sense of the issues, and, and it turns out there is some overlap between Ian's mind. I haven't seen Tom's, but... Uh, <laughs> they fall in between you, too. <laughs> so, so I think we'll, we'll just start with, with Ian, and then we'll go to Tom, and then mine. And we'll just ask the rhetorical question, and then answer it, and then... We'll have to decide, Tom. We haven't decided on how we want to stop for questions, or do we want to just... It's, it's op if I may say, it's often I find best with these panels to wait until the end for questions, okay. because some people find their questions get answered okay. along the way. That's so you'll have to be taking notes then for the you know, appropriate <laughs> questions. Are you writing an article? <laughs> So, Kel, do you have extra pencils too? I'm sadly I do not. I expected the scholars to provide their own writing instruments. Okay. Yeah. My question number one, which is for Tom, who I've never met before, but very nice to meet you. So my question, Tom, is how do you find reviewers for the manuscripts that are submitted to your journal for publication? Okay. Um, we have a panel of about 50 consulting editors drawn, let's say, about uh, two-thirds of them from Canada, Canadian scholars in adult education from, uh, from across the country, and then a third uh, international. Uh, and by that, I mean, you know, certainly some from the United States, but a lot from Europe and a lot from Australia. And we ask them to uh, describe their areas of interest. Uh, so I've got a lot. I've got a list of kind of 50, 50 or so um, renowned people in my field and their particular interests. So when a manuscript comes in and people are asked to, to say what what roughly it's about, and if they don't do that, I can usually tell that. So so if, if it's a particular issue about qualitative research or if it's about adult literacy, I usually go through my list. I I pick out the five or six people who who could potentially review that and give an informed opinion. I look at who hasn't reviewed for a for time, and I just we just send it off to them. We normally each manuscript that's sent to my journal is reviewed by at least three reviewers and one member of the editorial board. And usually I send it to four folks because one of them will write back and say they're on sabbatical or she's just had a baby or she's too busy or this is out of sight of my area of expertise or sometimes they don't even write back at all. But, uh, but so, so normally that's, that's the process we go through. Jim. Well, I, in, uh, I guess the strategy that we would use is very similar to Tom's is that you have, a, you have a kind of a core of reviewers in particular topics. And so you would go to that core. But on the other hand, you'll continuously find that, well, I've just submitted a request to Professor X a month ago, 
and she or he is still reviewing that document. So I, I know this is in her or his area, but I can't give it to that particular person because they, they're already reviewing. So now I have to go to a secondary list. And that strategy takes a bit of time. So I, I think this is uh, a, something that you should bear in mind when you've made a submission and that you're not going to get an instantaneous response. For one reason, there may be this duplication. Second of all, it may be that your topic is so esoteric and so incredibly narrow that it's going to take the reviewer uh, or the editor, it's going to take the editor a bit of time to try and find a suitable uh, reviewer for that particular document. And so you have to remember, reviewers are busy people. They have other things that they do in the daytime called teaching and research. And for them to take on the task of reviewing a manuscript is really what we would call extra to load. So they have other commitments that are much more demanding than reviewing your manuscript. So this is one of the issues that you need to think about that, you know, if, if the editor says, okay, I'm going to review your paper and I'll send it out, you should expect to hear me, hear from me in six weeks. Uh, that, you know, in six weeks and a day, I don't want you to be writing to the editor <laughs> saying, where's my reviews? Uh, because there are going to be problems. Uh, the other third problem that editors find in terms of getting assessors uh, is that you find that you will, the six weeks will go by, I write to the, uh, to the reviewer and I say, so where's the, where's the assessment? And the person said, oh, it's been crazy this month. My, my mother was ill. The kids are not doing well, etc." <laughs> but I'm halfway through it. So I'll get it to you shortly. So now you're in a dilemma. Do you allow that to continue, or do you just cut it off and say, too bad, and then start from scratch again? Well, the tendency is to say, OK, I'll give you another week or two in order to, to get it in. In terms of chronic. Uh, lateness. I think most editors have discovered that Professor Y is simply a chronic responder and the tendency will be not to send that particular person uh, a request for a review. And the same applies to book length manuscripts. Yeah. Of course, that's just so Ian, you should answer your own question. Yeah, well we use a different, uh, a rather different system. Uh, I go, I have an editorial board of about 32 uh, which is, was considered a bit, and I made it larger, that was considered, uh, so that's a lot smaller than your 50. Uh, and I take virtually every manuscript and go to the whole board and invite the whole board to suggest reviewers. That way, it's not my bias that's deciding who should review. It, I'm taking the board's suggestions. Uh, and the board, of course, uh, being scattered, roughly two-thirds, three-quarters from Canada, the other uh, quarter, third overseas, or, or in the U.S., uh, they know m many more people than I do. Uh, right now in, in geography, my response rate from reviewers is 50% on a good day. Uh, so it is very difficult to find reviewers. That means if something clearly is not ready to be reviewed, then you don't want to, uh, to, to, to take time up that, that can be better uh, placed elsewhere. And then the point you made about when you give up and then go to a new one before it's been too long a, a delay, that's always a tough job. Yeah. 